And to the Tuesday, April 10th, 2012 school board business meeting. Um, could we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here again, and um, I would, I'll start with item number one, adjustments to the agenda. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Anyone? No? Okay. Um, we have uh, a slate of three, I think we should do this in a slate, of um, three sets of minutes. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the minutes, please? Uh, you will in a second. I uh, move that we approve the board minutes for item A, B, and C as listed in the agenda. Okay, do I have a second? Okay. Um, any discussion? Any changes? Edits? Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, item number three, comments by student representatives. Do we have, uh, we do have middle school representatives. Come on up and introduce yourself and. Hi, I'm Gabby. And I'm Connor. I'm a representative from the Cape Elizabeth Middle, Cape Elizabeth middle School. There will be no school on April 13th, which is a Friday. Vacation will be from the 13th to the 23rd. Stop up day will be on June 11th as well as the eighth grade recognition. June 12th will be beach day and the 13th will be the last day of school. June 1st will be the last dance and there will be a dance on May 4th. The current opinion of CEMS is that lit circles are much better than class novels. Kids enjoy reading a book at their own pace and, at, and their own level and find people participating more if they enjoy their novel. The Special Olympics were at the high school this past Friday. Um, they went extremely well and many middle school participants participated and we also had many students that came and cheered them on and helped out. Great job to all the participants. This spring we will have sports, uh, the girls and boys lacrosse, baseball, softball and track. And they've, all the practices have begun. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, our high school reps. Hi, um, I'm Abby Donnelly and um, we got a lot going on at the high school. Uh, this month. The science team went third in the main science Olympia and they went to Massachusetts today to compete. Um, the Costa Rican exchange students are here. Um, they've been here for the past two weeks and they'll be here until um, Tuesday, next Tuesday. Um, so we are very happy to have them. Um, a group from the school is headed to Spain next week. Um, for a trip, uh, Miss Melanson is spearheading that, and it should be really fun. Um, and mock trial is going to nationals on May 5th, so best of luck to them. Hello. Um, the high school student council just got a new student president. Um, her name is Emma Hin Inhorn. She's a junior this year. Um, the World Affairs Council is showing a movie about Tibet called Murder in the Snow tomorrow at 5.30. Um, the seniors, um, all seniors in a language course above level four just recently had an oral proficiency interview, which is a 25 minute interview with a teacher um, speaking solely in the language you've been studying for four years, uh, which was fun. <laughs> and the um, AP government class just got back from a, um, a long weekend in Washington, D.C., which was unbelievable. We had um, a private tour of the White House where we saw Michelle Obama, and she smiled and said hello, and we <laughs> smiled back, <laughs> or tried to. <laughs> um, we, had to. We had a private tour of the House of Representatives and the building um, that they... Um, have offices in. We saw a lot of caucus rooms. Um, we had a private tour of the Senate. We had a tour of the <coughs> Capitol. We walked around to all the monuments at night, um, which is about a four-hour walk, but it was gorgeous because they're all lit up and everything. It was an unbelievable trip. Very worth the, um, the trip down there. So, yeah. 
That's great. That sounds like a lot of interesting, interesting things going on at the high school right now. So, um, comment. Right. Could I add something to what Abby said? Um, the science team competed in the state of Maine Olympiad uh, and came in third. Today they're down in Massachusetts in a completely different league. They compete in three leagues. When they came in third in the state uh, championships, they basically had about a week to prepare where a lot of these schools, uh, according to Jeff, some of these schools prepare all year for it. We managed to come in third. I, I believe there'll be an article in the Cape Courier about it. Great, great, thank you. Any other comments or questions for our student reps? No? Okay, great. All right, so we will move on um, to uh, comments from the public on agenda items. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, we'll move on to recognition. And we will hear more about the Costa Rican Exchange um, program from Mark Pendarvis. Um, and he, he's brought a group with him. I have. And Jose Luis. And Danny. <laughs> And Marco. And Marco. And Josie. And Josie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, hi. Thank you all very much. I don't know if you remember, a few months ago I asked you all for permission to uh, take this trip, this exchange trip. Yeah, I'm all set up. I stopped in earlier, actually. I even turned out the lights back behind you. Nobody noticed. But uh, I, uh, I actually did this uh, exchange trip, asked for permission. I've, done, I've been down to Costa Rica now four times. First time was in 2001, that was in the northern part of Costa Rica. And uh, the kids from that group were gonna come up here. However, 2001 was an epic year for the United States and everybody decided not to come. Um, then they were gonna come in February and we decided to go to a war with Iraq, so they opted not to do that. So I kind of left off exchanges for a while until 2006 where I did this again with an in-country organization and that's where I met Jose Luis Corrales. So, I'm the first part of this presentation tonight. And, excuse me for a minute, I have to turn the projector on. Jonathan taught me how to do that. I also brought my iPad with me to Costa Rica. I don't know if I was supposed to or not, but it came in very handy. Um, I took pictures with it, I took videos with it, and uh, I'll use it tonight and show you what it can do too. Thank you for the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation for helping us out with that. They can't help my eyes though. Um, so there's Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and let's see now. We wanna go to Guapiles, Costa Rica. So here we go. And there you are crossing Cuba and that's where we went, right down there, to Guapiles, Costa Rica, which is on the Caribbean side um, of Costa Rica. Matter of fact, the school's right there, but I won't. You can look at a map sometime. Um, but that's where Guapiles, Costa Rica is. Um, it's in the province of Limon. Um, it's over on the Caribbean side, like I said. Um, it's very different from the western side, which most Americans are used to. Most Americans are used to um, going to the Pacific and going to the resorts there. Not a lot of them go to the Caribbean. So that's that. Um, they also, the kids that were there, uh, we had a wonderful time. Uh, and they were also, when we left, I thought you'd enjoy this, they were part of what's called an acto civico, which is a civic act. And uh, our kids um, did a little talk at the end. So let's see if this works. That's their gymnasium. Um, this was sort of a goodbye assembly that they had for us. Bueno, para ser en agua, nosotros tenemos dos representantes que van a dar un discurso pequeño por parte de los estudiantes y el resto de los estudiantes, vengan, vengan, el resto de los estudiantes vamos a estar aquí. Tell the dress oh, location. Ella va a hablar inglés y tiene su propio traductor. Okay, after they're done. 
We've had a wonderful time in your beautiful country. Uh, we don't want to leave Costa Rica, and we can't wait to show you our country. Um, thanks for having us in your homes, in your school, and in your lives. Teníamos un gran tiempo en su país hermoso, y no queremos salir. Estamos muy emocionados para compartir nuestro país con ustedes. Muchas gracias por tenernos en sus hogares, su colegio y su pura vida. Uno, dos, tres. Muchas gracias. Oh, I thought you'd enjoy that. Uh, and then, of course, they came here, and when they were here, um, they've been, they have actually been here since uh, March 28th, I think, March 29th. They got stuck down uh, with the immigration. We won't get into that. Uh, that took quite a while. But while they've been here, they've done a number of things here. But they've also been part of high school Spanish classes and um, middle school and Pond Cove. Today they were at Pond Cove, right, Jose? They were at Pond Cove today in reading groups, reading to them in Spanish. Here's a picture of them in the middle school. Um, here's another picture of them in the middle school. That's Anthony over there. He's excited. Uh, <laughs> And again, this is also them over at the middle school. Uh, we also had a reception with the former ambassador to Costa Rica. I mean, you can see him way in the back there, Peter Chinchet. Um, that was a nice reception, and all the Costa Rican kids considered it quite an honor to, to be with the ambassador, um, a former ambassador of Costa Rica. And here's a couple of photos of, whoops. Um, while we were there as students, they also, the American students got to see many, many things. One of the places we went was a natural park. 25% of Costa Rica's landmass is a natural park. It's been deemed national parks. So that's 25% of the nation. And that one's in the Caribbean. And uh, they went down there and saw things that they have never seen before. And, you know, we'll continue to grow on them as they go through school and and study these things in biology class, like monkeys jumping over them. Um, it, this is at the Green Valley School where we went. They have an ecological trail back behind the school. Some of the kids um, down there took our students on an ecological tour through their ecological park right behind there. They have seven acres that they develop. And then I thought you'd enjoy this picture too. There's a, that's the family that Jane Coffrin stayed with. You see her face down there and that's, all the folks there, except for her sister, who kind of got cut off there. Um, but they lived with families, stayed with families, and it's very rare that you get to build these kinds of connections with people in a reciprocal way like these kids have done. Um, and then finally, on my part, what I did was, from Costa Rica with the iPad um, and YouTube and all that, I did blogs um, to my class up here. I, I use a learning management system called Moodle, which is an open source learning management system, similar to Blackboard. Many of you that have been to universities know how that works. And I did blogs from Costa Rica, so my students here at Cape Elizabeth High School had to read my forums and then respond to my forums every day. And in the forums, of course, I can uh, post all kinds of things, um, clips. I took pictures of our time down there. Um, and then they posted them, and there's the students' postings on that. Um, I think that's my presentation for now. Yeah, I think I'm done. So I thought you all enjoyed that. Um, and it's, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time for everyone. I really appreciate you all allowing me the privilege to do that with them and for them to have the privilege of experiencing something that, that I'm very passionate about. I, I love these kinds of exchanges because they just don't, there's nothing that replicates that in life, really nothing. Um, now I'd like to have Jose Luis come up and he has a few words he'd like to say.
Hi. Good evening, Hi. ladies and gentlemen. For us, it's an, a an special moment to stay here because we are working so, to, so hard to, to make real dreams become a true project. And Costa Rica, as you can see, is in a small country. We don't have army. We don't have many things that people spend money and other countries spend money and many things. But uh, we, our developing is growing with education. And for us, it's an, a big opportunity to stay here and share with you. Maine is incredible, really. You have a, a great treasure. And for us, the, we are surrounded by nature. Coming in here and see your nature, how you preserve all your areas. And for us, feel proud that we are doing good things, too. And share with the student from the middle school, the school, the um, in a high school is so exciting because we are sharing our culture and we are sharing our time with you. We are spending in a good way our time. And we know when we meet together, Mark and me, we know that really we are doing a very good job because we are changing point of view. And we are changing because when they have the experiences to share together, they're, they share their cultures, and we know that the way how they can see the world is very different. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much, because I know that you let Mark to make this project real, a real project. And for us, we feel very proud to see here. And thank you very much. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Um, I also had a couple other people I'd like to say a few words to. Danny is an English teacher. Bueno, los dos. ¿Usted quiere decir algo? Poco, muy poco. Venga, Marta. Venga, venga, venga. Come on, Marca. <laughs> okay, Marco. He's one of the students. He's staying with Alex Morning. Hi, my name is Marco Bolaños. I am representing the Costa Rica student and my... Well, my name is Jocelyn, so we are here representing the world students from the exchange program. Yeah, the exchange, the exchange is a very good opportunity to practice English and uh, share the different cultures and it's amazing. It's a real good experience. This is not only experience to make better English and practice, we make we make new friends. We have met a lot of person, a special person. We spent time with splendid families. There's something we just have a lot of things that is hard to see, and we have new experience, new new things to oh, sorry, new things to to tell to our child, to, to our families, to them see how splendid that person over here. Because I ha I can imagine that person like there are so special people over here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the election. Okay, we're going to make him talk. Okay. Danny. Danny. <laughs> Good evening. As well, as you can see, my name is Danny. Danny Perez. I'm one of the teachers, English teachers, and well, I'm I'm really uh, nervous. <laughs> uh, well, I just wanted to to thank you uh, for this opportunity because, uh, as you can see. Uh, in our country, English is, is a very important tool um, nowadays because these this, this kids that you, you can see in here, um, one of the most important things they, they are doing is learning English. So they can uh, go to, um, to make their, their, their studies in, in other universities and they are really excited about learning English and learning about your culture, which is great. Yeah, so I just wanted to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to close out this presentation, I thought a CAPE student would be appropriate. Oh, yeah. so, I've asked Josie Barth to come on up and, and close this sharing. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Josie Barth, and I'm a junior at Cape Elizabeth High School. So uh, as Mr. Pendarvis said, myself and 13 other CAPE students had the opportunity to go to Costa Rica. And uh, at 17, I've been very privileged to have 
traveled before. I've been to Italy and Spain, but what made this Costa Rica trip really different from my other travels was that us CAPE students were immersed in the culture and we lived with host families and as Mr. Pendarvis had said, there's really no experience like living with actual people who live in a, another country. And um, I remember my first day getting there. Uh, it was late at night and we just had a long day of traveling. And uh, I met my host family, I gave them all hugs, and then it kind of dawned on me that they didn't speak any English. <laughs> <laughs> and my host sister spoke very, very little English, and I realized that, you know, all my hours spent in Spanish class is actually going to mean something right now <laughs> in order for me to communicate. Uh, but, and that was definitely a little nerve-wracking, but when I was actually living with my host family, it was absolutely amazing. Um, I'm in Spanish 5 this year, so I'm pretty well off speaking, and uh, I actually had pretty good conversations with my family, and they introduced me to all the grandparents, the aunts, and the uncles, and what's so cool about the culture there is the families are very united, and, you know, like, the whole family lived on one street, so first you go to the uncle's house, have dinner, maybe go to the grandparents' house, have more food, and it was just an awesome experience. And then during the day, we went to the uh, school with our uh, host siblings, and we got to sit in on some of the classes and see how uh, their classes are run, and it's a little different, but it was definitely a great experience, and as Mr. Pendarva said, we were very fortunate to go to other places, like we visited San Jose, we got a walk around in some of the markets, and we lived in uh, Tortuguero for a weekend, and we were in the heart of the jungle. We actually had to take an hour boat ride to get to our hotel, and then the streets were all river waterways, so we were in boats going from place to place, and it was incredible. I've never experienced anything like it. But what I really took away from this trip was a new perspective of how big the world is. And for myself, it's really easy to forget that the whole world isn't just like Cape. Cape Elizabeth is just one tiny dot in the whole spectrum of the world. So it was really cool being able to go to another culture and see how other people live and for me, what I realize is that there's so many ways to be happy. There's so many ways to pursue happiness and have a great life, and that's what I learned in Costa Rica, and I hope that uh, they feel the same way living here. Thank you for your Thank time. You, Thank you, Josie. <laughs> that's great. Thank you again. Thank you, Mark. And um, I, I would just like to close out from a parent's perspective, if, if that's all right, because we were part of this exchange as well. Um, Abby spent time um, in Costa Rica, and so we have a student living with us, and um, you'll see it later on. We'll talk about our mission and vision, and one of our first um, one of our first values has to do with community, and the fact that our world is shrinking um, with technology. Our world is shrinking, and and we have a much better sense of our global community. And so, um, before I even let Abby go to Costa Rica, I had. Facebook, I had become Facebook friends with her host mom, and we've become friends, and I can tell you mother worry is universal. <laughs> because for the two weeks Abby was there, I'd, I'd you know, um, contact her, and she would let me know Abby was fine and not to worry, and I've done the same thing with Iris, and, um, you know, we have family connections now that I think will be lasting. Um, she calls herself, um, or she calls Abby her daughter now, <laughs> and has pictures posted of her um, as her, you know, her daughter from America. And so it was a, it's been a tremendous experience for us to have Marco in our home and to get to share um, that with our family and get to share uh, all of his experiences. And he's been very open about what it's like to live there and, and very willing to try um, our culture as well. Um, and uh, so thank you, Mark, for bringing this program to Cape Elizabeth. And um, 
I think it's been, you know, it's a great experience, not just for the kids who get to go, but to have all of um, your children, Jose Luis, come here and um, sort of come, you know, infuse into our schools. I know you've touched many, many children over the last two weeks, so thank you. Any other questions or comments? I do have one quick comment. I just have to say, I will actually be an hour from where you live <laughs> by Friday. And I cannot wait to enjoy your beautiful country That's again. Right. It will be my second trip. My first trip down was also an exchange program, living on some farms in the western part of Costa Rica. And this time I'll be um, east of San Jose. And I am just getting all the more excited listening to all the beautiful things that I'm looking forward to seeing. So what a great time you've obviously had. Yeah. Thank you. OK, no other, oh, Abby, do you have a comment? Yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Pendarvis and to Jose Luis for all the work that they've put in to the exchange, because I know for myself and Josie and every single other person who took place in this exchange, it was really a life-changing experience, not to sound cliche, but um, it was really life-changing. And as Josie said, it changed your perspective on the world, and we formed these bonds with people that will hopefully last a lifetime. And it's all because of you guys. So <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so we're going to move forward. Um, now to another recognition, um, and actually it's another host family. <laughs> um, and uh, the Jordan legacy of spelling continues <laughs> in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, we have a recognition for Nat Jordan, our state spelling bee champ. You want to come up or are we? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it, Nat. <laughs> okay. On, uh, Saturday, three weeks ago, I think, I went to the Maine State Spelling Bee at, in Portland, <coughs> and it went 50 rounds, and I won on coincidence. Excellent. So I will be headed to the National Spelling Bee on May 27th in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. That was that by coincidence or on the word coincidence? <laughs> on the word. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations. Any questions for Nat? Anyone need any spelling checking or anything? <laughs> no, that is terrific. Congratulations. Who do you get your spelling genes from, your mom or your dad? Who's a better speller? Ooh. My mom. <laughs> I, I actually, I know the answer. <laughs> I'm telling. <laughs> I think she would. Yes, congratulations. congratulations. And good luck. We'll look forward to hearing about the nationals. OK. We are um, now going to move on to item number six, communications. Um, our first item is mission and vision, which I alluded to earlier. Meredith will give us a, a brief rundown. Maybe if I can see to connect. There we go. Well, while we're waiting for this to recognize the fact that I've just plugged something in, um, <laughs> I just couldn't help but um, think about the, um, Josie's comment, just how her perspective on how big the world is has changed. Um, and I think that is part of what this vision and mission statement speak to. And it's difficult for you to see it right now, so I'll play with that. I'm going to ask um, Marianne Harrington and Elizabeth and Joe and Jeff and Steve if they want to add anything to certainly um, feel welcome to come up and speak. Um, this process started back in December. As you know, we gave the board an update at the last meeting about all the rounds with the stakeholders. So finally, we're happy to unveil the draft. The board has already seen a copy um, and we'll be 
taking on another round of stakeholder input beginning um, the week after vacation. So we have a K-12 faculty meeting scheduled for April 23rd. Then I'm hoping to meet with students at the middle school and high school again also during that week on May, uh, excuse me, April. April, <laughs> fast forwarded to May already. On April 25th, we'll also at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. hold community meetings at the high school. And um, at some point, um, the board, either through this meeting or um, if the board wants to set another time, will also be able to weigh, uh, to weigh in. So I'm just going to go look at the settings over here and see if I can make this turn on. Does anyone want to say anything about the statement or the process while I think about it? <laughs> I can fill in. <laughs> you, um, you really want to give us an open invitation like that? Not you. <laughs> I don't think she was talking to you, David. <laughs> I think members of the committee would be better. Elizabeth, do you have anything you want to say about the meetings? Because Elizabeth and I were the school board reps who sat, um, uh, who sat on the, the committee. Um, and we've ha we had three meetings to call the data um, and come up with the statements, and um, they were rather lengthy meetings. Half-day work sessions. Yeah, they were work sessions and very, very productive. Um, and you know, one of the um, the benefits of looking at all of the we all looked at the data um, numerous times, um, and. Uh, one of the things that was very apparent was that you know all the arrows are pointing in the same direction. All of the data, actually, um, from all the stakeholders, whether it was the community members, the parents, um, teachers, students, everyone um, had you know was telling us the same information about what they valued, where they thought um, there were opportunities. Um, you know, what our school strengths are uh, and, uh, you know, what they would like to see in the future. So I, th I think that was a real benefit for us. It, it um, was very helpful that most of what we saw um, was all pointing in the same direction and was, um, it made it easier than I would have guessed it would have been to, have, even though I wouldn't by any um, stretch the imagine, say it was, imagination say it was an easy process, but it was easier than I would have guessed given, you know, the, the stack of data that we had to get through, so. Okay, so I just needed to play with my connection <laughs> a little bit, but here we go. So the vision, um, and again, I think we just heard this um, from the students, both from Cape Elizabeth and the Costa Rican students who visited us, but Cape Schools open minds and open doors. The mission of the Cape Elizabeth School District is to empower students with the academic, personal, and social knowledge and skills needed to build fulfilling and connected lives. And then there are four values. I won't read the descriptions for each of them, but as Mary mentioned, community, academics, passion, um, and that sense of engaged learning, and then finally, ethics. And again, I think um, we saw these themes across the stakeholder groups, including through the alumni, um, stakeholders who um, took the time to respond to a survey that was sent out and uh, we're really excited to take this back out for some feedback. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, any other? Marianne, did you have anything? Mm -hmm. And wordsmithing with a lot of educators at the table is never an easy task, I would like to point out. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 
so the, an invitation for the community sessions will be going out tomorrow will be posted online and sent out through the schools um, so that those dates and times are made uh, even more public but we'll also be posting and sharing um, the stakeholder input again so that people have time to sort of look at the stakeholder input and see how um, the statement reflects or doesn't reflect um, what's captured in those in those documents and I would say among that data, um, one of the more interesting stakeholder groups um, was organized by um, Susan Dana sent out, I think, a Facebook page to um, gather information from alumni. Um, and, you know, some as recent, some graduates as recent as last year. And um, it w I think it was very affirming for the administrators and teachers to see sort of the fruits of all of their labors, it was, um, there were some very positive comments that came back about our schools and what our schools had, how our schools had prepared these students um, for, for life. And um, so it's an interesting thing to look at if you're. I think we all held our breath a little bit, not knowing what was going to be revealed with the alumni survey, but really hopeful that it would um, reflect some of the things that we had already spoken about and we couldn't have been yep. more pleased. I know, it, yeah, those arrows were also in the same direction, so I don't know. So I think it speaks to a deep, you know, the fact that all of the stakeholder groups um, are aligned speaks to a deep commitment to education and, and a commitment to education in Cape. To me, it does. I think it's exciting work and um, will help launch some of the strategic planning that the board has identified as a future goal. Mm -hmm. Can I make one? Uh comment slash suggestion you know I think uh, I, I, I'm really pleased with, with the work we've done and a big part of it for me is um, how do we make this accessible to, to the students and, and to the teachers in other words I appreciate we want to have you know great wordsmithing but I'd, it'd be great to get input from you know first some from different teachers and say well this may sound good but you know here's some ways or here's some resources some tools that we can provide them so they can um, you know, make our students kind of live up, live the values and, and live the mission. So, um, you know, I think um, that would help us in strategic planning and also uh, make sure we, um, you know, communicate um, some in a similar way so as students, you know, when they come in at first grade by, you know, sixth grade, they know, of course, you're uh, responsible. You, you're supposed to respect other students. That's the way we do it here. And I know it's a, a long-term process, but you know, I'd like to get the teachers' input on. Um, you know, this. You know, this sounds great. And here's some help or some guidance they could provide us on making sure um, we provide the students and the teachers the resources they need to to make the the values and the visions um, mm -hmm. come alive, so to speak. That's good, and that I think that will be part of the strategic plan work that we do in the fall. Um, right now, we'll probably in our stakeholder meetings, and it will be shopped back out to the teachers and all the stakeholder groups for further refining, and you know, just to make sure that it it reflects what each of the groups had hoped. So, anything else? Any other comments or? Questions or concerns? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to um, retirements and resignations. Okay. So we have received um, notice of retirement from District Technology Coordinator Gary Lenoy, mm -hmm. um, also from our Adult Programs Coordinator at Community Services, Karen Allen, and um, We've received uh, the following resignations. A resignation from Tom Morowick, speech language pathologist at Pond Cove School. A resignation from Susan Deves, um, CEMS teacher. And a resignation from Suzanne Martin Pillsbury, the extended school care program coordinator at Community Services. Okay, thank you, Merida. Um, superintendent's report. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think the student representatives captured a number of the things that have been going on here. I think eliminated from the list because it feels like it was a long time ago, but in um, mid to late March, the high school band and chorus concert was held. Um, 
I attended, had the opportunity to attend, and there were a number of middle school um, teachers there as well, a STEM conference, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics conference um, sponsored by the state that was held at Colby College in Waterville. And it was just a great opportunity to hear about some of um, the exciting work that's happening right here in Maine um, on that front, including um, some fascinating wind farm development work. Um, Let's see, I, there was a community coffee on March 24th. It was lonely, very lonely. Nobody came, but don't give up hope. There is one more chance to come for coffee on May 19th. I don't take any of that personally, but if you want to come have coffee, I will be there May 19th, rain or shine. Um, the high school staff participated in a professional professional development session in literacy and the middle school 7th and 8th grade teachers were there as well and some representatives from the K-6 literacy task force. Um, we worked with Penny Kittle that day um, on strategies for helping middle school students just become stronger readers and be able to work with a variety of um, types of text and text features. She'll be coming back to work with faculty again in May. The chef of the month um, was the end of March, I believe, somewhere around the 30th, um, held at the high school, and um, the chef, and I'm not going to remember the chef's name right now, which is terrible, but he was the um, chowder um, winner in the Greater Portland Chowder Soup and Chowder Festival. Um, and uh, some seniors from the community were also invited to attend that event. And um, Peter Esposito is working with Karen um, Allen at Community Services to schedule just a regular weekly luncheon for seniors at the high school. So they can just come in one day a week starting in May and have lunch at the high school. And um, in speaking with the seniors who were there for the Chef of the Month Day, I think they just enjoy the opportunity to be in the schools. It's a nice opportunity for them to connect with each other, but also to know that There'll be other people there, and it's good food, and um, you know it's an inviting atmosphere. And the, the students were um, just very involved in having conversations with them and um, interacting. Let's see at Pond Cove today. Um, parent, um, the Parent Association sponsored um, author illustrator Grace Lind to come in and work with students. And I learned how to draw a dragon, as did many, many, many of the children in the school. Um, she was very dynamic and engaging and talked to students just about the writing process, what it takes to actually publish a book. Uh, I think students were surprised to learn that it takes at least a year to get a book published. Um, but I think we have lots of inspired young authors and illustrators in our ranks now. The arts and music group have been working on the curriculum. They anticipate presenting at the April 24th workshop. And let's see, I guess that's it for major highlights, other than there's been continued work on budget, um, budget proposal to the town council, budget presentation for the town council will be tomorrow evening. And policy, John's not here, but the policy committee um, also has been working and um, the negotiating teams as well. Okay. Thank you, Meredith. Um, so any questions for Meredith about the report, her report? Uh, maybe at a future workshop. I mean, I know we, we've uh, the words STEM and literacy have, have come up a lot. So in terms of, um, you know, how, uh, you know, what STEM means, because I think, you know, some parents may be surprised you hear the word engineering, you may not associate it with high school, even though we have a great uh, mathematics and robotics. So maybe at some point, it doesn't have to be this year, uh, but at some point, just you know, how, how we should think of a STEM in terms of, is that something how we think of curriculum or just maybe a little bit more context around um, some things going on nationally in terms of how, um, you know, subject matters are, are being uh, built and um, developed. I think it, that will be good timing to talk about that probably in the fall. The new science standards, the next generation science standards are due out soon. They're in draft form right now. Yeah, next week Steve's signaling me. Um, so I think that, that would be good timing, I think, and we'd be very happy to talk about the work going on in those areas across the district. Okay. We'll move on now to item seven, new business. Um, uh, item A, consideration to approve the Cape Elizabeth High School science team trip to Washington, D.C., April 26th through 30th, um, 2012. Uh, I think 
everyone remembers the science team came and visited us at the last board meeting. Um, so do I have a motion, please? I move uh, for the approval of the Cape Elizabeth High School science team trip to Washington, D.C., April 26 through the 30th, 2012. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions? David. Um, I know, notice we've developed a standard form. I'm not going to vote in favor of this, but I notice we've developed a standard form to summarize for us some of the items. But there is a missing item from the standard form, which I would like to have, and that is insurance, mm -hmm. liability insurance, travel insurance, whatever appropriate assurance these kids should have. So if something happens, health insurance, whatever we need for, um, for these trips, for kids to be covered and for the school to be covered, I think there should be a checklist item and some thought given to what kind of insurance we should have. Just a suggestion for you, Meredith. I, I've looked at these things, they describe everything well, but I'm continually bothered by not, not so much the Cape Science team, but some of the other trips we've had about uh, appropriate uh, insurance coverage in terms of liability, health, uh, whatever else those weasel little lawyers can think of. And I'd be happy to ask um, Pauline to share with you sort of what, what's covered under the district's insurance policy, what coverages are required, and then what the additional coverages look like we can add to the forms. I think that would be helpful for me. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, um, any other comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor? Okay, five, no. All right. Item B: Consideration to approve the Cape Robotics trip to Anaheim, California, April 17th through 21st, 2012. Do I have a motion, please? I move that um, we approve the Cape Robotics trip to Anaheim, California, on April 17th through the 21st, 2012. Do I have a second? Second. Um, any comments or questions? All those in favor? Five out. Thank you. Item C, consideration to approve the proposed EF tour to England and Scotland during the 2013 April school vacation by Lisa Melanson. Do I have a motion? Sure. Um, I move that we approve the proposed EF tour to England and Scotland during the 2013 April school vacation by Lisa Melanson. Okay. Um, Claire. Oh, do I have a second? Let me have a second. Second. Okay. Okay. Questions? And I have comments? a clarification. She doesn't ask us to approve it. She asks us to approve to advertise this travel opportunity to hold informational meetings. She's not technically asking for approval of it. And I think that's important. If, if this is supposed to be improving it, that's one thing, but that's not what the paper says. Jeff, can you speak at all to the history of these? I know that it is accurate that she's speaking, seeking to advertise them, but I think his, you can speak to the history. I, I, I think that we, I haven't talked to her about the specific trip, but I think she's um, these these long trips with national organizations require a lot of planning um, so I think that Lisa expects that she would be coming back in the fall um, after she's advertised and seen if there's enough students who are really interested in the trips there typically are um, and that she would then be prepared to give more uh, some more details about the itinerary and that sort of thing I think that there's still some things to negotiate uh, about where specifically they're going to go and that sort of thing. So um, I think she just wants tentative permission so that she can at least uh, put it out there and, and explore the interests by students and families. Well, then I would, the I would move to modify the motion to um, uh, um, move that we approve um, the advertisement of this travel opportunity as set forth in the EF educational tour proposal and to hold informational meetings on school grounds. Okay. And to approve informational meetings? Is that well, that's what she's requested, okay. to hold informational meetings on school grounds. Okay. Um, this doesn't need to be part, this is not part of the motion, but the, the idea is that more formal approval of the trip will be done at some later date um, when there's more information. Okay. Just to clarify, do, do we, um, 
is the policy that we have to approve advertising of travel opportunities? In other words, because uh, you'd say, well, if I'm going to approve the advertisement, you know, I'm implicitly, hopefully, I'm going to approve the trip because I'd hate to have someone advertise something and everyone sign up and then not. So um, I'm not sure what we're actually approving. So unless, uh, I mean, it, I, we can I think do it. she's asking to know, is the board willing to consider this trip? And if so, is it okay for her to see if there's enough interest to warrant offering this trip in the fall? So I think you could do that by consensus rather than by a formal vote at this stage, mm -hmm. if that's the preference of the board. Okay. So, but we have a motion on the table, so. The, the technical motion is a motion to amend, which goes first. I could withdraw that. Uh, well, actually, I think that my motion to amend does what she wants, okay. if you want the truth. And it's, um, and to answer your question, uh, obviously when she advertises, it's, it's tentative. It's a subject to, to ultimate approval of the school system. That's how you take care of that problem. So I, my, my motion, if you want me to restate it, is to, I move that the school board approve um, uh, and allow uh, Lisa Melanson uh, in conjunction with EF Educational Tour to advertise a, the travel opportunity to hold informational meetings on school grounds as set forth in the attachment to uh, in materials uh, regarding item 7C on the agenda. My emotions always make you smile, Meredith. <laughs> because I can't write that fast, David, that's <laughs> all. <laughs> I can't read it back. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm from Massachusetts, what can I tell you? It's, it, take paragraph three of hers, and that's all you have to do is copy it. And then at, at the end, stick in paragraph 7C of the agenda. I don't think we want the I have taken. Is there a second? Michael? Okay. Any questions? Okay. All those in favor? Five minutes. All right, item number D, consideration to approve an unpaid leave of absence for a high school teacher um, during the 2012-2013 school year under Article 12-7. Do I have a motion? I move we approve the unpaid leave of absence for a high school teacher during the 2012-2013 school year under Article 12, Section 7 of the contract. I have to say her specific name. Okay, yes. Gretchen McNulty. Gretchen McNulty. So um, I move we approve an unpaid leave of absence for Gretchen McNulty yeah. during the 2012-2013 school year under Article 12, Section 7. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any questions, comments, concerns? All right. All those in favor? I don't know. Just a quick comment. I should have done it earlier. I certainly hope Gretchen comes back. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, she's one of our finest teachers. I'd love to have her learn and then bring it back. Yeah. Thank you, David. Um, e, we have a slate of um, athletic extracurricular staff nominations to approve. Um, does someone want to make a motion, please? Sure. Yeah. Um, I move that we approve the slate of athletic extracurricular staff nominations um, as listed on the agenda for the business meeting of the town council of the um, school board. Sorry, I was reading the wrong line. We're in the town council chambers um, on April 10th, 2012. Did you read all the names? No. With the addition of Andrew Ingalls. Thank you. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Elizabeth. Okay, any questions, comments, concerns? Just making it clear that the slate is listed in 7E of our agenda, plus the additional name. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? All right. All right. Um, item number F, consideration to approve the collective bargaining agreement for the Cape Elizabeth Education Administrators Association dated July 1st, 2012 to July 30th, 
2014. Do I have a motion, please? David. I move the, that we approve uh, a collective bargain agreement for the Cape Elizabeth Educational Administrators Association dated July 1st, 2012 to July 30th, 2014, as set forth in a certain draft agreement sent um, from the school board to the union uh, on April 10th, uh, 2012. Could I amend to have that date be reading July 1st, 2012 to June 30th, 2014, please? Did I misspeak? Oh my gosh. Yes, I accept the amendment. Second, please. Second. Okay. Any comments? Uh, Maybe, David, could you just briefly, uh, just for people that aren't following uh, the, uh, you know, the different bargaining units, maybe just a brief sketch of, um, you know, wh who's included in it, just so people can have an I a little bit better idea of what it entails. Who's included in it? It's, um, I probably couldn't name all, it's the educational administrators, which generally make up our principals, our assistant principals. Heads of department, um, maybe one more category. Athletic director, and instructional, instructional support. Director, instructional support. and athletic director. I'm sorry, I spoke over you. I'm sorry, tech and technology director and athletic director. Um, thank you. Um, I don't. I don't think it's necessary to go into the details of of the agreement since it hasn't been signed yet. So I. I, I think we'd Brian just. Um, but I, I believe I, I can say that it was a well-negotiated uh, agreement, and um, I, I would strongly recommend it as being an appropriate agreement. Um, it has a few unusual, a few different innovative things in it, but it's, it's, a, it's a good agreement. As a member of the committee that negoti helped negotiating it. Right. Any other comments? I would just like to thank our team, David and, and John, and our administrators um, and their team uh, for and, and Meredith and Pauline, and Meredith and Pauline, um, for um, you know all of the work it took to uh, to get to this agreement and the, the compromise. Thank you for for the time. Okay, all those in favor. Could, could I add a footnote? I, 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 this is a little bit like um, one of my favorite teachers. Um, I, I hate to see Gary Lenoy going off into the sunset uh, without a little bit of a comment from me. We'll say something. Oh, there is going to be the, something scheduled? Okay. Yeah, in June, I believe. Okay, then for once, I'll withhold speaking. Okay, so Steve, um, would you like to come up and sign the agreement? No disappearing ink, Steve. Does he have the pen with the invisible ink? Is this like the presidency where we get to hand out pens for everybody? Committee reports, as um, Meredith mentioned, John is not here to give the committee report for um, policy. I don't know if he spoke with any of his committee members to see if you would be willing to fill us in. Uh, he didn't, but. Um, we have been um, working very hard on the um, staff conduct with students policy, and we're proud of the work that um, Meredith and the DLT team has done with that policy. We're very pleased with the way that's come along. 
Um, we are also moving forward with um, revamping the school policy manual, the tome that it is, to see if we can um, call it down and make it more efficient, and we'll be starting that work um, immediately. Great. So. That's great. Good work to be done. I know that's a school board goal, so um, yeah, I'll be interested in um, hearing more about that, and I'm sorry I had to miss the meeting on Monday. Actually. You were missed. Any other committees? Do we want to announce the next, the date of the next meeting? Because I know we changed it. Yeah. I don't have my calendar. Yeah. We can put it on the web. We did decide to change the date of the mm -hmm. committee meetings so that the work that gets done during those meetings will have time to get to the next school board meeting for approval. Okay. So we can start moving that work along a little more efficiently. And so we had been meeting the Monday, early Monday morning before the school board um, but we moved to, it before a business meeting. Before a business Tuesday. meeting on Tuesday. Right. And have you moved them to Thursdays? Is that right? We rambled. I think I was one, one. one to the, is it the it's third? Thursday, May 3rd. Yes. Um, just because that was the date that everyone was available for. And then there, the final two of the year will be held on Mondays, but on um, different days of the week, <coughs> they will all be posted. So May 3rd is the next policy committee meeting. Um, and just to add, I want to thank the teachers. Association representatives and representatives from the school <coughs> also worked on the staff conduct of students' policy, <coughs> as well as our athletic administrator and community services directors. Yeah, there was some great work done. Great, great. Anything else um, for committee reports? Okay. Um, school board agenda requests? No? Um, announcements of upcoming meetings. I think uh, Meredith mentioned that we have a meeting tomorrow evening. Um, Michael will be, pre as a f our finance chair, will be presenting our um, 2013 budget to the town council for their um, consideration and approval. Um, so that's tomorrow evening, um, April 11th at 7 p.m. Any other um, upcoming meetings? To announce? No. Okay. Um, okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second. 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 Okay. All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary.